into our NFL discussion. Of course, today we are breaking down the AFC South draft recap uh, in our reaction to it, of course. We are going over the Titans, the Texans, the Colts, and the Jaguars. Uh, that will be the order that we break these things down in. So we'll go on and start off with the team that is closest to us regionally. That would be the Tennessee Titans based over in Nashville. Uh, let's go ahead and and discuss exactly what's going on with them. The Titans, over under for the season right now. Regular season win total is 8.5. Uh, they need offensive line help. They needed edge, uh, edge rusher help. And they needed cornerback help. And this is what they ended up doing in the draft. I'll go on and do all, let's see, they had six picks in this draft. Uh, two seventh-round picks. They didn't have a fourth, and they didn't have a sixth. So, they drafted tackle Isaiah Wilson in the first round. That seemed like a bit of a reach, uh, but the guy is massive. He's gargantuan. He played on a great line at Georgia. I mean, we'll see what happens, right? So, who knows? Uh, round two, they got cornerback Christian Fulton, and I think that was an insane value pick. They got him at number 61. Fulton was considered a he was borderline. He, when yeah. cornerbacks were being taken like crazy, he was kind of the one cornerback that was falling. Yeah, it was it was really I surprising. I was screaming, why are safeties not going? And this guy was a was a cornerback that probably could have gone earlier than he did, but just didn't. Yeah, same. He he and Tra, excuse me, Trevon Diggs uh, both fell pretty yep. substantially. Um, and, and both of them had to go up against all the wide receivers in the SEC West and just the SEC in general. Yep. And, I mean, they played – <laughs> they played some insane wide receivers throughout the season, so yeah, oh, they yeah. got they got burned a few times. But no, yeah, part, well, and he had to, he had the misfortune. I mean, he had to cover CD also in the in the playoff game. Um, you know, it, it, this he is, covered T Higgs in the in the in the in the, cha- in the uh, uh, national championship final. game. Yeah, yeah, national championship game. Well, this yeah, will so tell I mean, you. Pro Football Focus said Fulton was their twelfth ranked prospect on the draft board and easily the number two cornerback. He owns the highest PFF coverage grade in the country over the past two seasons. He produced the nation's highest forced incompletion rate, 30.5%, uh, when he lined up on the outside. His ability to stick with his man, consistently force tight coverage, and win at the catch point is as good as anyone. He was in the SEC receiver's hip pockets constantly. He will be the same way in the NFL. This was one of the biggest steals of the entire draft. I, I mean, I, yes. I think him and Diggs are a lot alike in the sense of, I mean, you said it. They they have some tape that makes them look bad. And while you could put a highlight reel up there that looks unbelievable, you could you could find where they went up against CD and Judy and in and, and Diggs case Chase and these other guys and and find some plays where they got caught. Oh yeah. And it's just it's just one of those situations where, you know, when you go up against that caliber talent so often, you're gonna get you know, caught sometimes. Teams are teams are going to um, you know, let you fall. Yeah. And and that's just the way it, this is one of those situations where Bill Belichick would say, Don't tell me what the kid can't do. I'm what he can do, and and I think I think the Titans were looking at that. Yeah. So, um, so they got a steal in Fulton. Then they had a bit of a reach uh, when they went into round three. You got running back Darrington Evans out of Appalachian State. Obviously, I'm a big Evans guy. I loved App State last year. I, I've loved everything Evans has done there under Satterfield and under uh, Drinkwitz. It, he he was outstanding. Um, but still, you know, early third round or late third, whatever, pick number ninety three. Um, yeah. he, this was a bit of a reach for a running back at that point. And that's, you know, okay, I get it. Um, along with that round number five, they got edge rusher Laurel Murchison out of NC State. Okay. Like he was part of that massive defensive line that, uh, that, that propelled NC State to a nine win season just two years ago. Uh, he stuck around while everybody else went on to the NFL the year before and didn't have a great year last year, but you get him around five. I mean, you know, the, you know the guy's pretty good. And then around seven, you got your flyers. You got quarterback Cole McDonald out of Hawaii, which I love. The guy's got a I massive really love arm. This pick. Uh, I really love this pick. I think this guy's got an electric arm. I oh, think yeah. he can play. I think he can play. He he's got he's got a little Jameis in him. A little I'm Jameis. okay with that. Because he is a young guy. He doesn't have to start immediately. Yeah, he ain't he's scared of throwing. Leader. He's not gonna be the leader in that locker room. So those are those are two. Really important factors. Oh, 100%. And then uh, the last pick, they got cornerback Chris Jackson out of Marshall. Uh, I couldn't tell you the first thing about yeah, it. Yeah, I was just I was just about to say, uh, this is this is one of those picks where I... Like okay, maybe, they, maybe it's I'm fine. sure they did their homework. We did not. Yeah, so. 100%. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, pro football focus doesn't even have anything on him. 
Like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's no, he's, I was know. about to say, no, he, he's not anywhere in their information either. He right. was he was the twelfth to last pick in the draft. So I mean, it, the the biggest one there, Cole McDonald, they got in the seventh round, uh, could end up being the backup quarterback, possibly. I mean, he's got a massive arm. Uh, this is what Pro Football Focus said: Tennessee needed a backup quarterback. Titans got one of the biggest arms in the entire draft in Cole McDonald. Uh, he brings to the table elite athleticism for the position and decent accuracy. McDonald had nine completions of 40 or more yards in 2019, which led all FBS quarterbacks. And this dude didn't even play every game. Like, that's, that's crazy. I was about to say he got hurt early, remember? Yeah. No, he got benched. Uh, yeah, no, he got benched. Uh, it, like, in the game, middle of several games. Watched. Yeah. Uh, the big issue with McDonald was his ugly decision-making and Jameis-esque style of play. He ranked 18th in big-time throw rate and had the 12th worst turnover-worthy play rate at the same time. I... Now, so I will tell you, as much as I criticize, see, I get blanketed for for crushing Jameis for these things. They weren't coached by the same people. No. His head coach is maybe the ultimate gambler I've ever seen. My, just, I, if there is Nick a coach that, for anybody finds, that doesn't know. let her rip, tater chip, it was Rolovich, okay? 100%, which he is and now when, taking when, over for Leach at Washington State. When you have a State. coach that's telling you, hey, man, w- let, let, let's go. Let let's fit that ball in there and let's see if we could do this thing. He, I I almost give the kid a little bit of a pass on some of those. Now some of those games when you got three or four of them in one game, all right. At some point in time, you got to rail it back in. But, yeah, and that that's why the freshman got to come in and play a little bit. But that's right, that's right. But yeah, otherwise, like I, the guy's got a massive arm. I mean, he can he can sling it, um, but he he can also sling it to the wrong team. I mean, he takes a lot of risks. And and in the NFL, that's boomer bust, man. That. Who knows? But they got time to develop him. They got Tannehill to a massive contract. Uh, you can bring this guy in and and possibly turn him into your backup. And we'll the Tannehill deal is only a two year deal, though. Wait, to what? The Tannehill deal is only a two year deal, isn't it? No, 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 no. It's a, it was like a hundred and thirty some odd million dollars. Like it yeah, was, but I don't was, think I, I think I think only the first two years are guaranteed, man. Uh, maybe okay, so maybe the first two years were guaranteed, but it was like sixty something million guaranteed. Uh, I don't for care the first about two. Any of that stuff. And then yeah, after that, you... it's not guaranteed. So either way. Let's uh let's move on from there. Next up, we got the Houston Texans. Eight wins is their over under. Their needs were defensive line, offensive line, and edge rusher help. And you know, I never know what to think about the Houston Texans. Uh, I didn't understand a bunch of the trades. Uh, they only had five picks in the draft because they traded a bunch of draft picks away. Uh, let's go ahead and roll through what they what they actually did. They had. One in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, and one in the fifth. So, you know, no chance for late flyers, anything like that. They got uh, defensive lineman Ross Blacklock out of TCU. That was a a pretty good value pick. Uh, A lot of people had him a borderline first-rounder as well. Uh, They took him at 40th. They had Ed Rusher Jonathan Grenard out of Florida. Now, that was a pretty good value pick in the third round. Um, he He is talented enough that he could take over what you lost when when they ended up trading away uh, uh, good grit what, what's the went to what's the guy's name good gracious the defense the edge rusher uh Clowney? South Carolina Clowney God bless <laughs> I kept wanting to say Kinlaw and I knew that wasn't I'm it. trying to figure out where we're going here <laughs> sorry he sorry. could take over for Clowney like they they didn't have anybody in Clowney's role last year that that was able to do anything uh Grenard could absolutely do that uh, uh, it'll take a little okay. time. He right. he he ain't okay. the same athlete. I understand. He ain't the I was same. I was gonna say he's gonna he's gonna play the spot because nobody else is there. Right, right? but he, I I think he's he gonna be play successful. it because it's open. All right, nobody's yeah. standing on third. So if you go play third, yeah, you just took a Rod's place. But that's not really how this works. The next three I know very little about. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like I didn't like this draft. I tried really hard to not just beat up Bill O'Brien because it's low hanging fruit. Yeah, it it's it's easy to do. But he just doesn't give you anything to work with sometimes, man. Yeah. No, you look I mean, at these he, trades and you don't understand them. Then you look at the draft picks and you don't understand those. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, my, Michael said they should let J.J. Watt go play for a winner. Uh, it's it's not uh, that the Texans, the Texans have been winning. You won't find a J.J. Watt apologist over here. Yeah, I, we Boy, don't. I feel sorry for that guy. No, I, I'm, I'm all good Listen, on that. One of the greatest human beings in the world. Hang on. I got I to gotta do this preface. Yes, he does a lot for society. The world is a better place with JJ in it than with me in it. All right. If one of us had to leave to make the world a better place, I should be the one to leave. With that being said, eh, screw that guy. 
he has never made that team great at all. He has sucked up so much cap money, and he he has never made a big play at a big moment in the game ever. They've been in a lot of playoff games, and that guy hadn't showed up. Now you're you're 100 right about that. When he leaves the game, they don't move the point spread a point, not a half point. Nope, sure don't. Uh, Michael said, "I don't feel sorry for him. I want him in Denver." So- <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. You got better dudes in Denver than you got him. dudes. Trust I me. I promise. Chubb and Vaughn are light years better than him right now. Let's uh, let's finish up the draft for uh, for the Texans here. Round four, they got offensive tackle Charlie Heck out of North Carolina. They got cornerback John Reed out of Penn State. And then in round five, they got wide receiver Isaiah Coulter out of Rhode Island. Uh, ultimate, you know, let's see what we got because obviously the competition is not going to tell you a whole lot about him. Um, I, I did see some good things about uh, Coulter, though. I mean, I, you know, that, that, but I've only seen because I haven't actually gotten to watch him. I mean, I didn't watch a single Rhode Island game last year. Who the hell did? So The, the one pick that really stood out to me that I just didn't like was, was the John Reed pick. I, look, I hadn't followed John Reed's career. I don't know even – I know this. I watched a lot of Penn State football this year just for some of the big games that I got to catch, and they were getting dusted a lot. And I'm yeah. not talking about dusted by NFL guys now. I'm talking about all those receivers at Minnesota were just wide open every time we turned around. And, and you know, Michigan had a bad first quarter. And then after that, that offense opened up and kind of scored it. It's just one of those things where it was just, this isn't Ohio State made you look bad. These are two offenses that aren't really great made you look bad. Let me, let me tell you what Pro Football Focus said about John Reed. Okay. Uh, he was there. Maybe 100- they disagree with me. They they most certainly do. They were, okay. He was their 100th ranked player, and the Texans got him at the 141st overall pick. Said Reed had one of the top athletic profiles of any uh, defensive back in the class, and was an ideal fit for a zone heavy team. So it makes this pick an interesting one. That said, Reed played under 100 snaps in man coverage this past season and flashed incredible skills on those limited reps by allowing only six catches on 18 target with six plays made on the ball. Okay. So we got some weird stats here, weird verbiage there. First, player profile is not something I'm ever going to look at. I watch the guys play, all right? That's basically measurables. He he fits the place based on his speed, his size, his abilities. Right. Okay. That's that's combine, all right? right. That right. I've never watched or paid attention to or really cared about. So I could be very wrong on all of those things. The – he played a hundred snaps when he played man to man, but he's go, but he's the perfect fit for a zone. Oh, it's just all right. I'm, okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I don't like you said a bunch of things that made it sound like he was great, and there's no question they know him better than I know him. All right, I've just watched them play football, and I didn't watch every game. All right, but I watched the Michigan game. I watched the Ohio State game. I watched. You know, I, I watched the the Minnesota game. Like I watched the big games, and that and defensive impressive. backfield didn't look great. I can I can understand it. I can understand it. And that's not elite ta- Ohio State elite talent, but really not at the receiver position. Not this year. No. And the other two, absolutely not. Now you're you're right about that. That's not the best talent in the country throwing the football. That's not Oklahoma football. Uh, no. No, no, no. Alabama, not those LSU, offenses right Clemson. That, that, that's not those offenses. You get beat by those offenses, you look bad. That's fine. Everybody kind of forgives you. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You are right. Just an opinion. Just an opinion. We'll see. I could be wrong. The Indianapolis Colts come up next here. Eight and a half is their win total for next year. So, per Vegas, uh, it will be between the Colts and the Titans as to who will win this division next year. Both of them are set at eight and a half wins. Uh, I think obviously Philip Rivers changes a lot of things. Obviously, it's only one season, and they've still got Jacoby Brissett, and and he will learn under Philip Rivers a little more, and and maybe become a better quarterback. But we'll see. Uh, but they needed wide receiver help, edge rusher help, and defensive line help. So let's see exactly what they ended up doing. They did not have a first round pick, but they did have two early in the second round. They had a third, a fourth, a fifth, and then four sixth round picks. So. Let's break this thing down. Wide receiver Michael Pittman Jr. out of USC with their first second round pick. And then they got running back Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin with their second second round pick. Uh, Michael already jumps in. He said, Colts best draft in the division. Now, we'll we'll give you our opinions here momentarily. 
Uh, Joseph Gomez jumped in on YouTube. Also depends on how they want to use a player because sometimes that is limiting the player as well. That's talking about John Reed with the Texans. So I'm, I'm sure, like I said, I, I can't tell you that I did a deep dive on John Reed. I, I just watched Penn State play a couple big games, and I didn't think their secondary looked good at all. I couldn't really tell you which one of those guys was John Reed. The other dudes, I just thought as a whole, they didn't look great. And, yeah, it could have been that they weren't used right. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? So, we got the second-round picks. They got safety Julian Blackman out of Utah. Obviously, you know my affinity for Utah players. Their defense was pretty lights out last year. Uh, they did not show up great against Oregon, but I, I don't think that really had a whole lot to do with the uh, the passing game. The secondary wasn't the breakdown there. They uh, they just got their butts whipped all up and down the field on basically every position. So, uh, round four, they drafted quarterback Jacob Eason out of Washington. Everybody knows Eason. Played at Georgia. Left Georgia when Jake Fromm won the job. You know, went to Washington. Uh, this was his only season there. Had to sit out the year before. Big arm. Not a great decision maker. Um, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll see. They, they've got a year to be able to develop him into the guy if they don't want to pay Phillip Rivers after this season. So we'll uh, we'll see. Joseph Gomez again on YouTube. Colts week schedule last year. You just don't plug and play a quarterback, even if it is Rivers. Give me the under. The Colts aren't world beaters. I will see. I think this is a really good organization. But again, let's keep rolling here. Round five, they got uh, interior offensive lineman Danny Piner out of Ball State. This is a big dude, by the way. Uh, I I like the pick, even if it is in the fifth round. And then in the sixth round, they had four different picks, and they took flyers on all sorts of dudes. Defensive lineman Robert Windsor out of Penn State. They got cornerback Isaiah Rogers out of UMass. They got wide receiver Desmond Patman out of Washington State. And then they got linebacker Jordan Glasgow out of Michigan. Now, they had three straight picks. 211, 212, 213. And they just they took dudes that they think can be pretty good. Um, Isaiah Rogers at UMass, cornerback. Look, I will say this. He is guilty by association because UMass had the worst defense in an all of Division One football last season. They were putrid, like beyond putrid. Um, but, I mean, he may have the measurables. He may be all right. We'll see what happens. Washington State, Desmond Patman, uh, obviously, he's a wide receiver. He had a, a ton of opportunities last year under Mike Leach's offense. The air raid, the way it goes, yeah, 100%. So, and then linebacker Jordan Glasgow at Michigan, uh, yeah, ben, ben jumps in, said UMass gave up 53 points a game. And uh, let's see, Michael Fritz said, Julian Blackman was a great pick, good cornerback before sliding to safety. Uh, yeah, that's Utah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, and then McKinnon, love the second round for him. Great value for both those players in the Colts system. Pittman isn't a burner, but runs great routes and has great catching skills and size. Taylor may have a bit of worn tread on his tires because of the number of carries at Wisconsin, but if he takes care of himself, he'll be a stud for him. I, I was a fan of what the Colts did in the draft. Like, they... They kind of do things the the Seattle way, the uh, the New England way. Like these are not guys that everybody is going to love all the time, but they are guys that fit what they are wanting to do. They are not, you know, loud. Look at me, whatever guys. I I was a fan of this draft. Um, go go ahead and give me your your thoughts here. I liked it. I thought I like I liked what they did, especially that second round. I mean, I taking an offense that I already really like a lot and Frank Wright and, and, and what they do there. I think Philip Rivers is a massive step forward. Um, never really gotten his dues uh, with the chargers um, and, and just kind of ran into some weird situations there, but um, loading up on that offense, big offensive line, Jonathan Taylor is going to be a beast in that backfield. Uh, and, 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 and that's going to be fun to watch. And even, even if he has tread on his tires, as McKinnon was saying, no, I'm not worried about trying his tires his rookie year, his no, third year. Like he's yeah, going his, his to be fine. When, he, when they get to his second contract, yeah, you don't want him. You don't want him then. That's fine. That's in four years from now. But his first two, three years, he'll be just fine. Yeah. I agree. He'll be great. He'll be great. He'll be okay. That offensive line is built to pound the rock. And that's going to happen. Phil Rivers knows how to run an offense. Pittman's a good receiver. Blackman, I like the pick. I, you know how I feel about safeties. I don't think you can have a tough defense until you have a tough man at safety. Um, and yeah. and uh, and they got Blackman's, that. Blackman's good. Yeah, and I like the Eason pick because I trust Frank Wright to develop him 
I think that, you know, maybe by next year, the year after, at least Frank will have an idea. Is this our guy going forward or is this guy just going to be a backup? Everybody else down. Couldn't tell you a whole hell of a lot about. <laughs> they they were all flyers from the fifth round. I down. mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the rest, of, the lot of them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an opinion. So top three, you like a lot. If I've got to sling it with a quarterback and take one, I I don't hate it. And you you're a situation where rather Phillips there this year and gone, or if he you know re ups next year and just keeps signing these one year prove it deals and you keep giving him twenty million dollars, it's fine. Then uh you know. The, you know, whatever, you'll figure it out with Eason. Um, but the the top three pick make me like it. I am biased because I trust this organization. Also, talked about somebody brought up the schedule, that weak-ass schedule from last year, and they're going to drop down this year. Let me tell you who they got. I had to pull that schedule. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> they get If we play a normal full schedule, they get the Browns. as a, uh, That's a W. Trust me. They get the Bears. <laughs> As, as long as Mitchell Trubisky is there or Nick Foles there, that's, that's going to be a, a w. w. Yeah, They get the Lions. They get the Texans twice. I say split with them, which I think they can sweep them. I like Watson a lot, but that's all me liking Watson a lot. Let's say they split with the Jags, even though I think they can sweep the Jags. I also think they will split with the Titans because the Titans have never swept them. I don't know that the Titans have beaten them very much in our lifetime. No. They're probably going to get beat by the Ravens. They can beat the Bengals. Packers, I'll give you Packer fans one. Let's say they lose that one. Vikings, I got no idea. I'll give the Vikings that. They got the Jets. We're at nine wins right there. So, or eight wins right there. Then that's if they don't sweep the Jags. They, they, you know, they get the Raiders. They get the Steelers. We don't know what those teams are going to look like yet. I'm telling you, eight and a half is probably a good number. This schedule this year ain't a whole a hell of a lot worse than last year's. No, you're you're 100 percent right. I it's, cannot it's wait just, for the schedule. It's just not. It's, I, I think this team is good, and uh, and I think last year they didn't have very many skill players at all. Ty was very up and down health wise. Couldn't keep anybody healthy on the at the running back position, which is why they went out and got one. Um, it's why they went out and got a receiver. I, I think they're going to be poised to make a playoff run. Yeah, I think I think you're probably right. I, this is, you know, possibly Rivers' last stand. Uh, he's going well, to go also out and, don't and believe the it. Titans can repeat what they did last year. I don't think yeah. Tannehill season is replicable. Well, I don't on, think on top can. of that, they they you know they got rid of Jarrell Casey. Now they could still get Jadavian Clowney, but we'll see. Um, I want know, they, them to sign Clowney, and they lost I, Logan I, Ryan. I don't know that they lost, matters though. At the end of the day, I don't believe in Tannehill. Yeah, but they, they won with defense and, and running the football last year. They did not win with Tannehill. Like that wasn't you can't you can't that's not sustainable for two seasons. That's what I'm saying is they lost a ton of experience on the defensive side of the football. Well, the team that's gonna go backwards is them. I think the Colts take a step forward. The Jags are rebuilding, the Texans I got no fucking clue what they're doing. <laughs> All I want is Watson's and a Patriots jersey. Is that too much to ask? I don't, I don't think it's too much to ask. I mean, I know it's a lot. I know, I, I know, it's, I know. I just asked my daddy for a car for Christmas, but I really want it. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, ben said, uh, uh, "Oh, Michael said I hate Rivers, but I have to respect the guy. He's the guy you hate playing but love when he's on your team." You're really Obviously, glad he's out of the division, don't you? Yeah, he's out of the division, so it, he's happy with it. So <laughs> I don't, I don't think the Broncos have to play uh, the Colts this year. Nope, so I think they're not fine. on that schedule. Uh, Playoff, that'd be it. And then Ben on YouTube said Tannehill had frauds as coaches in Miami. Uh, yeah, 100%. that that might be. If you go back and look at the stats for Tannehill last year, man, they, it is in the fun. regular season. It was really good. It is, but it's fluky. It's, it's fluky. all fluky stuff. It's it 100% not, is. You just can't replicate it, man. History yeah. says nobody's been able to do that two years in a row. And it's they, all fluky. God, they paid him so much money. Oh, yeah, Jesus. so basically I went back and looked at that deal. Hang on, I got that deal pulled up. Okay. So it's it's basically two and a half years guaranteed. That third year, if he's half decent and they wanted to trade him, it's almost no dead cap money. So they could move him that third year, but half the contract is guaranteed that third year. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, all right. It's all front loaded, by the way. The first year is 37.5. Okay. That that's that is over half of his guaranteed money he gets in year one. That's so it's basically lot. is. Yeah, it's a two year deal. Yeah, that's man. not two and a half years. That is a two year deal. 
That's a that's two year deal. That works. It's a, it's a two year deal where all the front money is loaded, front loaded money. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. The Jacksonville Jaguars are the last team from the AFC South that we're going to hit today, and they got a lot of picks. Good gracious. Their win total is set at five. Their starting quarterback, now that Nick Foles is gone, it looks like it's going to be Gardner Minshew unless they decide to bring in one of these free agents. Uh, I I mean, the only one left really is Cam. That's it. I mean, Only the lonely. We'll see, but if if they bring in Cam, uh, or if they don't bring in Cam, it lets me know they are not interested in winning this season. So... You know, we'll see. I think I think they're only interested in winning this season if they realize Minshew is their Drew Lock. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I could see that. Uh, by the way, Michael said if we're uh, if we're all getting a wish, referring to you wishing that uh, that Deshaun was on uh, the Patriots, he said if we're all getting a wish, I'll take J Lo at my place. I, you can I'm with J Lo. Deshaun at the Patriots. I think I'm going to get more out of mine than you're going to get more out of yours. Maybe so. It, well, it depends on how long he gets J-Lo at his place. I mean, this is all a dream, right? So, whatever. Uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> give me another 10 years. I'll take it. Uh, hey, Michael said... You know, uh, the best advice I've ever been given. I don't know if you checked in a couple years ago, a couple weeks ago. I'm going to give it to you again. Best advice I've ever been given. She ain't the only one that's got one of them things. Hey, you got that right. <laughs> they all got one of them things. That was That was last week. I remember that. Uh, the Jags took my guy Chenault from Colorado. Uh, hurt me when they picked him. He'll be a waste down there. Come on now. I don't know. Come on, they're building this team. Yeah, they're uh, here. Let's let's roll through them all. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna like normally I like to stop and talk about them, but here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna break them all. I'm, I'm, I'm they got a doing lot of damn picks. They got a, a lot. lot we of can't them. go through all these guys. They got a lot of damn. Picks. Oh, that's a, I, I can roll through all of them here. Here we go. We'll roll them, but round one. They had two picks. Cornerback C.J. Henderson at nine, and number 20, edge rusher Clavon Chasen out of LSU. Round two, they got wide receiver LaVisca Chenault out of Colorado. You know that's my guy. I'm all about him. Uh, Round three, they got defensive lineman Devon Hamilton out of Ohio State. Round four, they had two picks. They had offensive tackle Ben Bart out of St. John's. That's D2, by the way. And then round four, they got cornerback Josiah Scott out of Michigan State. Oh, sorry, they had three in round four. Uh, linebacker Shaq Quarterman out of Miami, Florida. Now, obviously, Miami's defense really good last year, but uh, offense was. And Michigan State's defense more. always good. Always good. Yeah, you got that. No, right. I, listen, I like, I like this draft. I don't yeah. know how long it'll be before these guys actually make a difference on that team. I mean, I think they're all they're all projects, pretty much. I re- but, and they outside of the one kid from D two, they everybody came from a big boy school. You got that right. Uh, they at round, least play good competition. They didn't take somebody who wasn't tested. No, you got that right. Uh, round five, they had two picks. Safety, Daniel Thomas out of Auburn, and wide receiver Colin Johnson out of Texas. Both, like both those picks. Both pretty good picks. And then like round six. Picks. Round six, they had two draft picks in round six. Quarterback, Jake Luton, Luton out of Oregon State, who everybody in the free world kind of thought that the uh, Patriots were going to take. And, <laughs> and then, of course... Uh, <laughs> the Jags end up getting him. Uh, he's tall. Uh, Ben L on YouTube said Jake Luton is tall. The, yeah, Jake Luton is tall. It, it's I heard this guy's name. I don't remember ever watching him play. Gary swears I watched him play a game with you him. You did um, last year. I don't. I don't remember that. You and I if sat I in Hollywood game, Casino and watched Oklahoma that State. Guy was so not in Oregon memorable. State. I didn't remember him being in that game. They scored so many points. You just didn't know his name yet. But as soon but as soon as they said the Patriots liked him, I said, let me guess. He's he's tall. He's gonna be like six five, six six or bigger. Yep. He's going to not just be like a junior coming out that was like some elite guy. He's gonna be like a red shirt fifth year senior. Okay. Something of that. He's he been a captain for five years. He's been on the team. He's old. He graduated. I bet he graduated with honors. Like, all of these attributes, <laughs> because I know Bill Belichick, yes. and literally, we looked it up, and just check mark, check mark, check mark. Oh, yeah. All, all the way down the list. He fit them all. This, this is Bill Belichick's perfect quarterback, by the way. Oh, yeah. This and is in, him. And instead, uh, Doug Marone has got him down in Jacksonville, and I'm <laughs> that's fine with me. They got two more picks left. Tight end Tyler Davis out of Georgia Tech. Who knows? And then cornerback Chris Claybrooks in the seventh round out of Memphis. Uh, Boy. Yeah. 
Clay Brooks. I got no idea if he can play cornerback in the NFL. I I don't know if he can play in the NFL. I know he could play at Memphis. He was pretty good at Memphis. Because uh, well, he's I, an athlete. I mean, so I watched every game. I mean, this is what you do in the seventh round. You just take yeah. you just take Sparks guys. You got uh, that right. Oh, yeah, you run a really good three cone, and you you're explosive. You got a long jump and and, and a vertical. Yeah, 100%. we'll just give you a shot. Uh, the kid from Oregon State, by the way, the quarterback, six foot seven, with a Ooh, tremendous great. arm and has shown sharp decision making. He may not offer any mobility or anything outside How old the pocket. Is he? How old is he? Thirty-two. Uh, well, basically, I mean, he was—I uh, think he was a fifth-round senior, or fifth, uh, uh, fifth-year senior. Uh, he said he can be a quality backup to Gardner Minshew. Um, and so let's let's go through some of the comments right quick. We got uh, we got two more. McKinnon on Facebook said, "Are we running with Minshew mania?" I do feel like he got thrown into a hailstorm last year and did relatively okay, way better than any analyst had him doing in the NFL before last season. Well, look, he right. was a sixth-round pick, and Nick Foles got hurt in the first game. He, he did know? substantially better than anybody would have guessed or projected. If he played for the Steelers last year, the Steelers not only make the playoffs but could make a run. That's the difference between how good he is compared to the slums that they were putting out there. 100%. And then Michael, that doesn't mean he can start in the NFL and be a star, but he's at least going to have a shot. Uh, you got that right. Uh, he will be in the league for a while. I would guarantee that. Well, yeah, he'll be a backup no, if, if he can't start. Every team want him as a backup. Every team. Michael on Twitch said, how long before they're leaving Jacksonville and filling everyone else's roster? (laughs) He's trying to kill him. He's trying to kill him. I like this draft. I thought it was good. I like this draft. They they I I think they win the draft for this division in volume and quality. And they they drafted the way I like, which is they if you if you got late round picks, you don't know what you're doing. Just take athletes, man. Just take a dude that's big and strong and fast, and and we'll figure this thing out. Maybe he can play, maybe he can't. But at least I swung. Um, I love the early picks all the way down. The only kid I, I can't tell you I know anything about the St. John's kid, but but all the way till you get to 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 the sixth round, all their first, one through fifth round picks, I I like a yeah, lot. Yeah, big fan. I, I mean, all guys that have been tested against good competition. LaVisca Chenault, I mean, obviously, second round. You take a flyer on him. He was first-round talent. Oh, just only had the medical because issues. of injury was he second round. Yeah. Uh, Clevon Chason uh, out of LSU, obviously. Yeah, I mean, they, they got him at number 20. He probably could have gone earlier than that. C.J. Henderson, 100% all in on that. Devon Hamilton, uh, defensive lineman out of Ohio State. Like, he showed out last year. Like, yeah, these, these this is a good draft. Like, this is a good draft. This is a good team. They really are a team that, you know, probably needs to look at some skill players at some point in time outside of Chenault. But yeah. you know me. I, well, I mean, that, Colin Johnson, I, you know. I would get skill players very last. Running backs and receivers are the last thing I care about. So, you know. Well, I mean, they still got Leonard Fournette. I mean, are they going to I mean, are they going to trade him? They're trying to trade him, but nobody wants him. I mean, that's. They're that's not going to pick up his fifth-year option. So, after this year, he's, you know. He's done. I, they're I probably know. they're going to let him walk. They're not going to pay him. Uh, Michael said, Hi, I respect the uh, hell out of Minshew, though. How can you not bull for that guy? I mean, one, look, he's insanely entertaining. The guy's got a, an incredible mustache. He's wearing the headband. like, And he's just likable. Like, yes. in an interview that you see with him, I mean, my goodness, his interview on uh, on Pardon My Take after, like, week three or whatever it was, I mean, it, fantastic. The guy's unreal. Uh, he's he's incredibly personable, and you got to like that in a guy. Um, if he's going to be your team leader, like, you, you need that. You need that 100%. So, who uh, who won the AFC South draft and who lost it? I'm going to go with the Jaguars won it. I think they did pretty good. They they looked like a well-run organization for at least one night. We we, we agree here. Now, listen, they could be a well-run organization now. They fired all those other guys, all right? Yeah. I mean, you're right. I, I mean, this is, not, this is not the same old dudes picking these. And here's the problem, okay? They, in the past, have drafted well, no problem. Okay, yeah. drafting is not a problem. It is keeping the guys in there, and and realistically, I'm about to about to sit on a guy I respect, but Tom Coughlin ruined this team. Oh yeah, okay? he came in there as a general manager and tried to treat them like he was the head coach. And the whole if you're not five minutes early, you're late, and finding guys, and you just can't do that to people. Not okay? not, not in I today's mean, NFL. And then you can't get free agents to come there because. The, I mean, they have more because of Tom Coughlin. They have more disputes with the NFLPA than any team. If you added all the other teams combined, 
they they had obscene amounts of disputes because of that, which is one of the reasons Coughlin is gone. You oh, yeah. just can't do that anymore in the NFL. You can't. Uh, you sure can't. Michael said, uh, I really did like the Jags draft, just didn't have faith in the franchise. And I think that speaks for everybody. Uh, but, who who but lost? The franchise is only who makes them up. I don't think they have yeah. an owner that's making decisions or doing crazy things. So it's – they could be – I don't – I couldn't tell you anything about who's running this team now, okay? Oh, yeah. I know this. I always liked Doug Marone a lot. I thought he got a bad rap when he first got there. He didn't want to re-up with the Bills when they had an ownership change. He had an out clause. He walked away from an NFL coaching job. I understand that. I, I respect that. I think he's a better coach than what he's been given. I don't think he's had any talent at all. Now, has he he picked some of that talent? I don't know. I don't know. Was he a decision maker ever there? So, yeah. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Michael, uh, I think he probably agrees with, with both of us. I'd say Colts, Jags, and close second, Titans, and who knows what the hell's going on in Houston. I think the Texans probably lost this draft. They didn't have a ton of picks, and I don't really like what they did with the majority of them. Um, and then, and like I said, I kind of was trying to make myself pick somebody other than them because I just feel like at some point in time it's piling on, but I'm not trying to make friends. I'm not trying to – I'm telling you my honest yeah. opinion. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Now, now if it works out, there's a reason you get paid a lot of money to do what you do, and I get paid very little money to do what I do. But I don't, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't think – I just don't like building a team that way. I will tell you this. The way Jacksonville is building this team, listen, there was a day and a time where this team was not ready to make a run, and they were drafting running backs in the first round, i.e. Yep. Leonard Fournette, my boy. Like, you know, that's not, that's not what you do. That's what losing teams do. Joseph they Gomez go on YouTube. Flashy toys when the team is not ready for flashy toys. Joseph Gomez on YouTube said, uh, "I thought the son of the billionaire that bought the Jaguars is not taking over." Uh, I, no, 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 no. He's not guy, the GM. That guy, that guy's not taking over. That guy is a moron and going to get his dad in trouble. But he's, he's fighting with players on Twitter. Is what he's doing. Yeah, but um, he is he is absolutely not taking over. Michael said the real question in Jacksonville: Who has a better stash, Con or Minshew? Uh, I think they're both. Well, now, Con stash is is old, a mature so man. Like, like yes, yes, yeah. that's right. That is that is this is the difference between Burt Reynolds, all right, and and hipster stash. While I love Minshew and I respect Minshew and I love the stash, it is very much just a hipster stash. You got that right. All right, uh, so we we both think the Texans lost the draft, um, yeah. and then we both think the Jags won. Yep. We uh we have run an hour and fifteen minutes. Is there wow. anything else that we need to hit today? No, sir. Let's go home. Wonderful. Let's uh, let's do that. I got to get out of here and get the boys. So, uh, we appreciate all you guys for jumping in. Obviously, we appreciate the guys that jumped in the chat. You guys have driven the conversation day after day after day. We can't thank you enough for doing that. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. We would definitely appreciate that. Make sure you are subscribed on whatever your favorite platform is, whether it's podcast or video. Uh, and, yeah, it, as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.